What's going on, Calamity Crew, gamer guys and gals? It's Easter weekend. Peter Cottontail was happy enough to uh, bring me a gift. He bestowed upon me the Hori Fighting Commander 4 for the PS4, and actually it works on PS3 as well. So let's open this bad boy up and let's go over the features very briefly and see what we got here. Now the first thing you'll notice right off the bat with this controller is that it has what they call an asymmetrical design. Basically it means one side is different than the other and as you can tell this side over here is longer than this side. And I guess they figured that's so you can grip it, grip the controller uh, you know, more firmly, have more control of it so they give you more to grab onto which is a little bit different. Um, I think this is the only controller that I know of that has the asymmetrical design to it. You know, a lot of controls are symmetrical where both sides are exactly the same. But, um, so that's the first very noticeable feature. It also has a turbo function here. So you can have turbo function for the front face button. And as you can see, it has the front six button layout, which is very ideal for fighting games, which is the purpose that I bought it for. Um, it is also compatible with the PS4 or PS3. And you just switch between the two with the front toggle switch here. And four or the three makes it compatible for either console. And you also have a toggle here for the D-pad. You can have DP, which is D-pad, not Dragon Punch. The uh, LS mode, which you want to, if you want to function like a left analog stick. And there's also an RS if you want to function like a right analog stick. It also has the home button and it has a share and options feature. So that's like I said before, it does. It is compatible with either the PS4 or PS3. And it also has the six buttons up front, but you also still have four buttons at the very top here on the shoulder. And you can actually reassign the shoulder buttons as well with a toggle switch on the top. So you can switch it over to the left here, my left, and then that'll switch it to L3 and R3. And then you have your L1 and L2 over here. And you can have these as your R3 and L3. So essentially you have access to all buttons on this one controller if you so choose. Now another feature is you can change your sensitivity of the directional pad, the D-pad here, and you simply adjust that by this little slot here, this little uh, knob on the back here. You can adjust that with a coin, and it has the central, which is normal, and then you have your S and L. And basically what they say in the instruction manual, you switch it to L mode, that's going to make your D button, your, your angle of your D-pad here, like the sensitivity will be a wider range. So it's gonna make your controls a lot more flexible or whatnot. So when you switch it to S, it's gonna make the arrow, the D-pad, the input's gonna be more precise. So if you guys really, you know, want your precise movements in here and you don't want a whole lot of missed inputs and you're missing moves or whatnot because it's just too wide a range, it's not as, you know, precise. You can switch that sensitivity with that knob here on the back. So we'll just switch that back to normal mode. And then actually, another feature of the controller is you can adjust the degree of the D-pad itself. And that's just with this little cog here on the front. It's very simple to do. You just slide it that way to unlock it. And then you, you can adjust the D-pad that way and then you just lock it back. And then as you see, now the, the angle of the D-pad itself has changed, um, which is really weird. I've never seen a controller that does that or has that function either. And I guess that's part of the asymmetrical design. I guess it depends on how you want to hold the controller itself Sometimes the D-pad may need to be moved, depending on how you hold the controller. Everyone's different, but I have more standard grip, so I'll put mine back at the standard function. But it's very easy to move, 20 degrees. Not a whole lot of motion or movement in it, but it is a little bit, and every little bit helps, I guess. And then you just lock it back in place. And there you go. So that's basically a lot of the functions. Also, it is corded as well. So you do have a cord with it, fairly long cord. So you do have some distances you can reach with it. Not exactly, they don't exactly tell you how long it is and I have not measured it, but it's a pretty pretty good length of cable they give you here. The controller seems somewhat sturdy. It does seem a lot lighter than you would think. It looks like a very big hulking controller. It seems kind of big, but it actually is very light in the hand. So only time will tell about the uh, durability of the controller, but I picked it up anyway. That's the uh, 
basic overview and unboxing of the Hori Fighting Commander 4 for PS4 or PS3. I picked it up specifically for Street Fighter 5 because I needed a fight pad. I do have a fight stick, but I figured I'd try a pad out as well. Thank you guys for checking out the video. Leave any comments down below or any questions you may have about the controller, anything that they didn't go over, and I can try to get that information to you or go in more in-depth you know, analysis of the controller. But thanks for commenting, rating, subscribing, checking out the video. Hopefully you guys are having fun with Street Fighter V. That was the main purpose of me buying this controller. Until next time, gamer guys and gals, you know how we do it all day, every day. Game on, game hard.